here, welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to be showing you the best, the easiest sheet pan recipes. All you have to do for these recipes is stick everything onto one sheet pan, stick it into the oven to bake, and then there you go. Your dinner is ready in no time at all. So I hope you love all of these sheet pan meals as much as I do and my family does. So let's jump to my kitchen and start cooking. We're getting kicked off today by making this roasted garlic and black pepper pork tenderloin. So to begin, I'm just cutting my one pound of red potatoes into smaller pieces, and then I just trimmed my one pound of fresh green beans. I placed the potatoes and the green beans in this large bowl, and then I drizzled two tablespoons of olive oil on top, added one tablespoon of minced garlic, a half a teaspoon of salt, and a fourth a teaspoon of pepper. For the rest of the seasonings, add a half a teaspoon of onion powder, garlic powder, and pepper stir everything together. I set my vegetables to the side, then pulled out my sheet pan, lined it with parchment paper, and then I'm adding this pre-seasoned, pre-marinated roasted garlic and black pepper pork tenderloin. I just got it from my local Walmart. I love buying pork tenderloins like this just because they're just so easy. You just have to put them on your sheet pan. And then I added my veggies, and I'm going to place this in my preheated oven to 425 degrees for about 40 to 50 minutes or until the tenderloin is cooked. Here's my plate of food, that pork tenderloin and all of the veggies are packed full of flavor. The veggies and the tenderloin were nice and tender. I love making this meal just because of the simplicity of it. Now we're making the best ever sheet pan meatballs with broccoli. So to get this one started, I have about four heads of broccoli I cut into smaller pieces along with a half of an onion that I diced. Now over to my large bowl, I'm going to be adding one pound of Italian mild sausage in there. I just removed the casings on my sausage and added it in along with the onion that we just diced up two tablespoons of milk, a tablespoon of minced garlic, third a cup of Italian style breadcrumbs, or you could use regular breadcrumbs, whatever you prefer. And then I mashed this all together and then I thought, oh man, I totally forgot to add in an egg. So here I am just adding the egg in and then you are going to mix everything to combine. After I placed my broccoli on my sheet pan lined with parchment paper, I spread it out as even as possible. And then to make the meatballs, I just got a little scoop of the meatball mixture, and then I rolled it into about an inch and a half in diameter. And then just, I'm placing it all around the sheet pan, kind of in between the broccoli. And then this is gonna go in a preheated oven to 425 degrees for about 18 minutes. After those 18 minutes, I pulled them out, and then I flipped the meatballs, and now I'm pouring a little bit of marinara sauce on the top. I used Prego marinara sauce, but you could use any type of marinara sauce you have on hand or like. And then to finish it off, I'm sprinkling mozzarella cheese on the very top. I'm going to place this back in my oven to bake for an additional five minutes. I absolutely love making this meal for my family because it is the perfect lower carb option. But what you could also do is you could boil up noodles on the side and then heat up the rest of the marinara sauce. And then you have the easiest spaghetti and meatballs. My sister was actually over on that night enjoying dinner with us. We're going to get started on this marinated chicken and vegetable dish now. This recipe is perfect because you could really use any type of veggies you like, but I just chose to dice up a couple zucchinis, one yellow bell pepper, and slice one red onion. I added all of those veggies into this large bowl, and now I'm adding in one pound of cubed chicken breast, two tablespoons of olive oil, a teaspoon of Italian seasoning to give it some extra flavor, two tablespoons of red wine vinegar, a tablespoon of soy sauce, teaspoon of Dijon mustard, a dash of salt and pepper, and then a teaspoon of minced garlic. You are going to stir everything together, put cling wrap on top, and then let this sit in your fridge to marinate for at least 30 minutes. I marinated mine for about an hour. 
After this was finished marinating, I pulled out my sheet pan and put it right on my sheet pan. And then I placed this in a preheated oven to 400 degrees for about 20 to 25 minutes. And then I pulled it out of the oven. I went ahead and gave it a good flip, just stirring everything together. And then I put this under the broiler for an additional two to three minutes. Here's my plate of food. This is another wonderful lower carb option. All of the veggies and all of the marinade mixed together has amazing flavor. And then when I told my daughter it was dinner time, she came running in the kitchen and she was jumping for joy just because she was so excited. Now we're making these smoky pork chops with carrots and green beans. So to get started, I'm beginning on the seasoning mixture. So in this little bowl, I added a half a tablespoon of brown sugar, two tablespoons of olive oil, a half a teaspoon of salt, a fourth a teaspoon of pepper, one tablespoon of paprika, and then a teaspoon of garlic powder. Mix this seasoning mixture all together. I placed my five medium thick pork chops on my sheet pan and now with that seasoning mixture we just made up, I'm going to be brushing it on both sides of the pork chops. My daughter has been really into carrots recently, so now on one side of the pork chops, I added two cups of diced carrots. I made sure to cut the carrots into small pieces so they cook. And then I added two cups of fine frozen green beans. I drizzled a tablespoon of olive oil all over the green beans and the carrots. And now I'm adding the juice from a half of a lemon on top along with a dash of salt, pepper, and garlic powder. After I add all of those seasonings on, I'm just going to mix everything together with my hands. This will bake in a preheated oven to 400 degrees and then you will put it under the broiler for an additional two to three minutes. Here is the finished product. I kind of forgot how much I love making baby carrots like this. I really need to make them like this more often but this is a really wonderful pork chop recipe. I think you'd enjoy it. These stuffed bell peppers make for a perfect weeknight meal or you could meal prep them so easily. To begin, in my pan, I just added one pound of ground beef. I'm going to cook this ground beef up. If you wanted to, you could use ground sausage or ground chicken as a substitute, but once my ground beef was cooked, I removed any excess grease and then added one can of diced tomatoes, half a teaspoon of salt, fourth a teaspoon of pepper, a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, and a half a teaspoon of garlic and onion powder. For the Parmesan cheese, I'm adding in a half a cup of that grated Parmesan cheese. I gave this a good stir and then and I thought, oh geez, I totally forgot to add in the tomato sauce. So now I just added in eight ounces of tomato sauce, gave this one last good stir to melt the cheese down. Once my cheese was melted, I removed this from the stove. I'm using four bell peppers for this recipe. You could use any color. I sliced them in half and removed all of the insides and the seeds. It's fairly simple to stuff our bell peppers, so with a smaller sized measuring cup, I'm just scooping a little bit of that ground beef mixture out and placing it inside of each of our bell pepper halves. You can't forget about the cheese on top of the stuffed peppers, so with a third a cup of Parmesan cheese and a half a cup of mozzarella cheese, I'm sprinkling it on top of the peppers. This will bake on 400 degrees for about 25 to 30 minutes. Here are my beautiful bell peppers ready to enjoy at dinner time. Like I said previously, if you have a super busy week, these bell peppers are perfect to meal prep for lunches or dinners. Now we're making this loaded Cajun chicken, potato, and green bean dish. 
On my sheet pan, I'm going to be adding a pound and a half of these little red potatoes that I diced into smaller pieces. If you don't want to use red potatoes, you could use golden. To the potatoes, I added a tablespoon of olive oil along with a half a tablespoon of this Cajun seasoning. I'm going to mix everything together and then place this in my preheated oven to 400 degrees for about 25 to 30 minutes or until the potatoes start to get soft. While those potatoes are in the oven, I'm going to start on the chicken. I have a pound of chicken breast I cut into thinner pieces like this. So to my chicken I'm adding one tablespoon of olive oil along with a half a tablespoon of that Cajun seasoning and then you are going to stir this all to combine. Once my potatoes are out of the oven, I'm going to push them to one side of my sheet pan to make room for my chicken and my green beans. While I'm pushing them to one side of the sheet pan, I am kind of stirring them. But once I'm finished with that, I'm going to be adding the chicken that we just made up to the center of the sheet pan. I'm going to spread it out as even as possible. In this bowl right here, I have about a pound of trimmed fresh green beans. I'm adding them to the other side of the chicken with a half a tablespoon of olive oil on top and then just a little dash of that Cajun seasoning. I'm going to place this sheet pan back in my oven for about 25 minutes to bake or until my chicken is cooked completely through. I really enjoy this Cajun chicken, but if you wanted to use other seasonings like smoked chicken seasoning instead of the Cajun seasoning or seriously any other type of seasoning instead of that Cajun seasoning, you certainly can and this will still be just as delicious. I have so many more sheet pan videos like this on my channel, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any more in the future. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.